good eating right there. Try to use these multipliers here to get it out. It's pretty deep. Probably just a little shower. Ah, oh, it's nice, man. That is nice. It's been so hot. That is really nice. There it goes. All right, see? All that guff about nothing. Let's see if I can catch something else. Probably should make for camp. Oh, maybe not. There it goes. Oh, that's it probably. Might be on the front edge of this. I thought it was just passing over. It looks dangerous. <laughs> okay. Alright, so we got to get the camera off the tripod and in the bag without it getting wet. All right, there we go. Okay, she goes in the bag. Here comes Mike. See how the my guidelines are going to be yeah. coming out here to the middle. Yeah. I got a fish laying down here on the canoe. Uh, maybe it won't wash him off into the lake. Uh, hopefully that'll get to be something. And uh, this rain came up really fast, so uh, we just kind of tucked in, waiting for it for a minute. If you've ever used the water bags that go with the Sawyer, you know how hard they are to fill, and I know they've got some some different kind of bags out now but when I first started getting the Sawyer units uh, you had to you know push them under the water to get them to fill which means you would probably stir up the bottom somehow but there's these newer bags now this one's from I'm gonna call it Sea Knock Outdoors for a lack of a better understanding of how to say it but they they're back open bags like this see? the whole back end of the bag opens up like that and I've never used this before, so I don't know if it works well or not. Okay, that's, a, that's pretty quick. And you can do this. Hmm. I don't want to get, you know, dirt in the water. I guess you have to do it this way. Wow. Maybe that's it. Okay. And that's got all kind of goop in it. So, yeah. <laughs> it's got to go through a filter, obviously.
Chris, fire's big enough. <laughs> oh, I like it to be about 150 <laughs> degrees outside, like that, like that stick was I just grabbed. Uh huh. Uh huh. Whew. It's already hot. I know. But that's a good fire, man. That's a real good fire with all that wet wood. Yeah, that black and white firework starter works pretty good. All right. So I have a little small bass here. We're just gonna prep it up and do it. On a day like today where everything is wet, it would be difficult for me to find enough small sticks and it would take a long time just to get a fire in my gas fire stove, which is what I'm going to use. But someone asked me online in the comments had I ever used wood pellets in this. I can honestly say I had not at that time, but I have messed around with that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Just want to do wood pellets. Let's we'll see if we can get this started. Now, what I have is one pound exactly of wood pellets, and we'll see how much fire we get out of this one pound of wood pellets. It's counterintuitive to me to go into the woods and carry wood. That just doesn't make sense. But in a situation like this where everything is wet, it might make really good sense to some people. Or if you're in a desert situation where the resources are very limited or even someplace else where it's snowy or hard to get wood, um, then pellets might be a really good choice for you. So this is going to be a burn down scenario uh, because if you build a fire under it and pour the pellets in, my experience tells me that the fire just goes out because it doesn't get any air. So I'm going to load this up pretty good. And I am going to use an accelerant to get it started. All right, that's the whole pound. How about that? Let's just go that way. A little bit of alcohol right up top. See if that'll take a light and stay lit. A little olive oil. The part that makes this good is onion flavored hush puppy mix. Now there's the pellets. They're not doing very much. Okay, so I had to add some twigs to this and use another fire starter to keep it burning. The uh, wood chips were actually just trying to go out, compressed wood, I mean, was trying to you know, just kind of go out. So I, I had to get some coals on top of it. That's why I said this is kind of hard to start. So I'm not sure it's a, a good fuel alternative for cooking on at all. So what I'm going to do is put the uh, the burner plate up here, or the you know the pot stand. It is starting to gasify a little bit. So it'll look pretty good, and that that works real well with this small frying pan. wood chips or wood pellets are still burning extremely well. They were hard to get light. I'd say, you know, at least 10, 15, 20 minutes uh, went by there trying to get it to burn. And now we probably still have another 25 or 30 minutes of nice fuel heat energy and it burns really well. So I'm not, I don't disagree with using these. I just think they're not optimum, you know, when you have other sources. Uh, if you, if you don't have a fuel, readily made fuel source, then packing these along might be a really good option for you. There's Chris. <laughs> so let's turn it off. It's too bright. Yeah, it's a bright light. It's a bright light.
I like to use clarified butter. Look for my link to the video on how to make it. How's the coffee? That's excellent. Good. <laughs> Second cup. So and Mike, he good. made some hot dogs and some eggs and some grits. It must have been pretty good because he uh, ate it in about five minutes. Maybe, no, maybe 30 seconds. Yeah. Sunglasses out there. Wild persimmons will be sweet as sugar in a few weeks. This is Mike B from Mike's Wild World. Appreciate you taking the time to take a look at the adventure. Please make any comments, anything that you saw that you want more information on. If there's any links you'd like to have. Uh, we had a vast array of different types of equipment, uh, ways to use it. Uh, it was a great camp, uh, good bit of rain. So we were good, it was good to go. Good day, uh, I think the rain's coming back and Time for me to exit. Thanks again.